What's up, guys? How's it going? Welcome back to Dub Digital, the hottest crypto channel on the YouTubes. And today we got a very special guest. We got Aztec from Crypto Secret Circle. How you doing, man? Very good, brother. It's good to be here again. Thank you for letting me show up, and it's, uh, I'm excited to go ahead and get into this. Yeah, man, it should be fun. He's a very smart individual in the circ- um, in the crypto space. Has his own channel, and he was actually the one that put me on the Matic. He's got the Matic merch on, dude. Matic merch. Yeah, bro. What? So I I actually picked up this shirt as a Matic Mitra, probably about a year and a half ago, or maybe even longer. These are there's only so many of these made. Oh, really? And um, they just went out to Matic Mitra's. It's like the team shirts that they had, and I just got lucky. So I actually got I got two. So I was actually thinking about in the future once Matic continues to like, you know, become whatever it is. Um, I was thinking about auctioning one off for charity because it's okay. like a Matic one, so it's kind of rare since they're moving on to becoming Polygon. That's cool, man. That's like a uh, a, a shirt NFT for reals, bro. That would be cool to actually. That's actually a good idea. I thought about yeah. that, like pairing it with a uh, NFT. Awesome, man. So, guys, if you didn't know, Matic, it's blown up. It's blown up. I got um hip to Crypto Secret Circles channel last year when I started first making my channel, and I actually picked up a bag. Not suggestion, not financial advice, but it's been killing it, guys. So this guy obviously knows how to make some, pick some winners. Also, you know, Uniland. We could talk about a little bit of quick, you know, I hear some big things and quick are on the horizon. So that's cool too. Yeah. Um, but just a very, very smart, smart man to know in the crypto space. If you guys don't know, go check his channel out. Make sure to give him a like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime. And I do watch you every Sunday. I love your, well, not every Sunday, but as many times as I can, just because work is crazy. Yeah. But I love your live stream. Um, I think you're just you're way up there, man. You're very articulate. I mean, you know your projects, and you're following projects that I I just like. You just pull these these like really cool gems out of nowhere, especially like projects from like 2017 that are like still doing things that maybe not everyone knows about. You know mm-hmm. about them, so that's why I love following you and uh, you know kind of diving into whatever you got going on. Thanks, man. You know it's. Variety is the, the fruit of life, right? Right. That's kind of like, I'm looking and playing in the crypto forest, running through the altcoin forest, and I'm looking for my own piece of altcoin gold, man. And, you know, everything doesn't work out. But there's definitely interesting investments everywhere. Yeah. Any kind of thing you want to find, any any protocol doing whatever you could think of is out there. <laughs> you know, you got to do the deep digging. But, hey, there's some stuff that people haven't seen just because there's so many projects, thousands of projects, you know. So I appreciate that, man. For sure, bro. We got a lot of respect for you. I, I love your show. You mentioned Quick. I gotta know about Quick. You guys don't know Quick is a uh, is a Dex on well it's Polygon now, right? Rebrand, Matic rebranded to Polygon, and it's on the layer two, right? So it's supposed to be very, very cheap and well, quick. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, bro. That um, so I'm trying to not say anything that is not announced yet. What we do know is that staking is coming. And what I can tell everyone is that staking is coming extremely soon. So there is a concern that there's too much circulating supply on the market. Staking is going to soak that up. And there's some huge things. Like all, all I can say is there's some huge things that are coming down the pipeline. And then there's just so many ideas that we can implement. Um, the amazing thing about it is that quick swap is a dex on polygon and technically the you know anything running on polygon is just more cost effective and gas efficient than even binance smart chain and binance smart chain is really received a ton of interest lately you got pancake swap but the thing is it's like you know anywhere from 15 to 25 cents per transaction over there if you're doing micro transactions or you know smaller trades mm-hmm. uh quick swap is less than a penny and it's just as fast and now there's all these new updates on the ui side on quick swap where it's so easy you can just like click a button and you're automatically switched over to matic network you don't gotta like set up all these rpcs and um you'll the uh dex actually gives you a little matic oh yeah yeah i saw that 
So it's like, it's super easy to use. And there's so many other like UI updates and cool product launches that are coming, not to mention some extremely big things that are coming down the line. So um, I'm excited for it. You know, I'm still holding quick and um, it, it has corrected recently, but it 500 X in, I think it will actually more than 500 X in January and February. So you're going to expect a, a correction. No one can complain about that. Guys, if you're complaining about a coin that runs up 500X, yeah, it's going to give a little back. But, hey, you know, it's all progression, man. You know, it's all progression. And what? A million cap supply on Quick, guys? So It's crazy. That's actually a really good point because, I mean, technically, the entire circling supply is not even out yet. But even if it is out, a million, that's nothing. And, you know, in, on top of that, um, there's – there's uh, so much that's going to be, you know, staked and it's going to be used for, you know, different pools. And that just means that the the supply is just like diminishing. You know, it's just going to be going into the ecosystem little by little. So, Guys, so you understand um, when something's staked, it gives incentive to the users not to sell. When there's no sell pressure, there's really only buy pressure. So, you know, you put two and two together. It's basically reading the tea leaves, what he's trying to say. Right. Interesting, interesting. And, you know, that kind of is like an organic jump off point to talk about just Ethereum and alternatives in general or Ethereum scaling solutions. Like I had this one thesis and I had a interview. My first interview on YouTube was with Eduardo Lima. And we got into the talking about, hey, how do you think this next bull run is going to kick off? Is it going to be Ethereum centric like it was last cycle or or what? And I kind of had this idea that, you know, investment is a lot like physics, right? They follow like laws of physics, like diffusion, right? So like when when particles are like in a ball, right? They want to seek areas of like less concentration. Same with capital, right? Everything in DeFi is in Ethereum, everything. And all around the periphery is a bunch of other chains that have like benefits, more efficiency, faster, cheaper, right? Like so we're seeing a little bit of that with Matic because Matic's explosion kind of lined up with Ethereum gas fees just going out of control. Right. You know, so other than Matic, what else do you see, uh, you know, down the pike in terms of Ethereum alternatives that can benefit from like money moving out of it? Or do you think that's not the case? You know, I want to ask you this too, mm -hmm. uh, but, but I mean, I'll just, I'll answer, um, in my opinion, Ethereum has the majority of the liquidity. So products are launching on Ethereum because they know, you know, that's where all the users are. It's not that much um, that they have to, you know, learn or do to, to start doing whatever. They just need to push the boundaries essentially. And I think who that would be in my opinion is the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, mm -hmm. outside of Ethereum, you do have Binance Smart Chain. And I think they have a lot of hype, mainly because of Binance and CZ, who is, you know, marketing genius, they're a powerhouse, ton of money and liquidity and devs and everything there. But who's truly innovative, you know, a lot of people are saying Polkadot, but in my opinion, for like interoperability and, and the future of, of, um, just more options available is going to be the Cosmos uh, ecosystem. And then that kind of segues into projects like uh, Persistence, you know, that are creating even more futuristic financial products. So mm -hmm. um, that, that can really, you know, be interoperable. So I think interoperability is a huge play and Cosmos is doing that, that uh, ecosystem is doing that really well. But, but I want to know, like, also like, who else are you seeing that's, you know, popping up that seems really interesting? So, like, um, I'm of the mindset that capital, well, the majority of capital will stay in Ethereum because it's just s sanctioned, right? Like, the second digital asset to get futures on it, you know, it's kind of like entering that realm of Bitcoin in terms of Wall Street, right? So, Ethereum's obviously here to stay. I'm, don't get me wrong, right? right. But I think there's going to be some spillover. And I think that spillover is going to blow up other chains. We already saw it happen with Binance. Binance for like a week or two was going insane, right? And then um, 
But like in terms of like, I could try to pick and choose what chain I think might receive some of that, but I think you're going about the right way by like, I'm not going to try to pick it. Let me just get the interoperability play because they got to get back and forth somehow, right? So right. like, um, I get it like Tindermint, right? Cosmos, that's kind of why you're liking it, that kind of a technology. I like WAN chain, hmm. right? That's my interoperability play. Cause I, I, you know, I've been making videos about WAN chain for about seven months, you oh, know? And they, they were highly anticipated ICO in 2017, just kind of, you know, for at least at a bad time. <laughs> Price went down, people had their own perspectives about it. You know, we could all say what we want to say about it, but WAN chain's really one of the only working decentralized interoperability like products right now. I mean, they don't have a whole bunch of coins connected, but that's going to come with time, right? Because every time you make a connection, you have to, you know, do the legwork to get it there. But once right. it's there, it's forever, right? So, I mean, Cosmos too, right? Cosmos has that China connection, but WAN chain has a China connection. Right. And I don't know if you heard, but they got a, um, they have a partnership with the state grid, which is a, like a Chinese municipality. And it's a utility for like tri electricity and stuff. So that just got like announced two weeks ago. So that's a big deal. <laughs> that's a big deal. And and you know, like maybe it's not the go between chain solution for retail, but it's already got one really big utility that doesn't even compete with other businesses, right? Because it's mandated in China. So yeah. that's a lot of money moving across. It's kind of my pick. It's kind of my baby, you know, so I have some bias, right? I think Cosmos is, is good. I mean, it's gotten named by, you know, the national blockchain system for some reason by China. Mm -hmm. They have plans for it. They obviously have plans for WAN chain. Why would they need two? Because like, I think everyone knows at this point that blockchains, it's not going to be one to rule them all. It doesn't have the capacity. It's just, it's not optimal. It's better just to have a bunch of chains together and intertwine and work. So that's my take on it. Actually, that's really interesting. And I didn't even know that about one chain. And it's cool because that that's actually a really valid point when, when you get connected with like governments or something like that. For instance, I think it was ICX in 2017 totally exploded. I believe it was because there are connections to the Korean government or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. It blew up. So mm -hmm. it can just be one connection with, you know, uh, you know, from where they're from centralized type thing, whatever it is, I can totally change the game for that project. So it's, it's a really good point. Yeah. Cause like, like countries, they could pick a chain and make it their own and that's their chain, mm -hmm. right? They could share there, but I think there's going to be public chains, like big public chains mm -hmm. where countries share and do commerce back and forth in terms of handling their stuff. I think they want a chain that they could own. You know, and <laughs> how does it, how does a country own it? They buy up a big supply. Yeah. You know, have a majority stake. Part of the decision process and technology stack. Yeah. It's a, it's a really good point. And I see what I like about you, bro, is that you understand, which, and I, I don't mean this mean, but there's a lot of people that don't see that the future is the, the um, internet of blockchains. They're, they're all working together. They're all transmitting data, whether those be tokens, coins, uh, liquidity, information, wh whatever you want to say, it, it's the internet of blockchains. And, you know, a lot of people are just stuck on kind of like maximalism, tribalism. And I, and what I see with you is that you really understand, which, which I believe is, is what the future is for all of us. It's the internet of blockchains. Yeah. More money is a man. I mean, I, I always say like, hey guys, all money's green. Like, I don't care where it comes from. It's yeah. all green to me, man. Like for real. And cause look guys, if you stay one-minded tunnel vision, you're gonna limit your possibilities to see other things. Mm -hmm. And that really just hurts you in the end. You know, yep. like, I mean, cause I, I've evolved over the cycles, man. Like I used to be my coins, everything else is is not good. And then I saw everything shoot up and some coins I hated on shot up high as heck. Yeah. <laughs> and I got over that real quick. Um, let's switching topics here. What do you think about the next big trend coming down the pike on D um on crypto? You know, it was the DeFi thing that seemed to cool down a little bit. Now NFTs are starting to cool down, but they had a run with Beeple doing his thing. What is it like 96 million for one of his NFTs? Yeah, that was um, 
Yeah, and I, and I know you've talked about blockchain gaming. How how's that that niche coming? looking good from your point of view or have you changed your mind on what the next thing's going to be in terms of like a craze that could be the next one um though i i really believe that nfts actually aren't done um mm. so what i saw in 2000 well last year was that DeFi was blowing up from the beginning of the year and in october everyone was saying it's a bubble it pulled back really heavily this can be seen on like a chart on DeFi pulse and it, it did massively pull back. But then if you look at that same chart now, it's like a little tiny blip. And mm. like we're almost 2X the value, the TVL that was within the DeFi ecosystem. And it's steadily going up. So I think like even, even now, like DeFi is a killer app, but also NFTs, I believe are so early. Like you have like projects like Persistence that are going to, um, use nfts for like real world um you know assets and things like that and you know there's all these other projects that i'm hearing about that want to use nfts for various things like um real estate and, and not just like artwork necessarily so what i believe is that it's blossoming and that that everyone's experimenting with the technology but that that run really isn't done. I think that NFT, like personally, I think NFTs are going to continue pulling a lot of the limelight for the rest of the year. And then maybe next year, it could be something like gaming because mm -hmm. when I'm looking at these gaming projects, a lot of them are like just almost there. Cause I'm a gamer. I, I like, um, you know, I don't play as many games as I used to because I just don't have time, but but I understand what makes, you know, games really tick. And I feel like they're almost there. They're almost there. They just need a couple other things. It could be marketing or exposure, um, you know, integrations into different platforms, um, exchanges, or just, just more exposure, really. And also a couple, you know, UI fixes and things like that. And that could really be the next thing. Um, but that's kind of like my thought process. I, I, I don't know necessarily if it will be, but I, I think that it could be. But I really think NFTs will be probably still the show for a while. For sure. And, you know, like that question's kind of I never when I get that question, to be honest, I never know how to answer it because it's like craze. Like we're early in the craze. If it's a craze, you know, like some people are saying, oh, DeFi is done. NFTs are slowing down. Like, well, it's like a, the, the first leg in the craze. Right. Because right. these things are cyclical. You're trying to time Oh, the first leg's over. What else first leg's going to take off? But yeah. in the grand macro scheme of things, it's it's all going higher, not financial advice. <laughs> but it's all going higher, you know? Let's be real. They just started buying a whole bunch of blockchain art. Yeah. They haven't even touched the pink slips. They haven't even touched the deeds. Oh, did you hear about this? I did a, a video on Tezos. Tezos is getting traction. Like, because Reno's making a DAO. Reno, Nevada. Right. That's that's insane we have actual municipalities now talking about making reno coins you can you can buy a piece of the reno economy through a dex See i'm that? barely hearing about this so I, I'm, I'm interested you let let me know i tell me a little yeah. bit more about that. yeah so so tezos like they've been they caught a lot of slack in the beginning because of the whole lawsuit thing they went through a lawsuit dispute between the founders and a lot of people got down on tezos but tezos has always been pretty high grade like blockchain right Michelson is actually one of the smart contracts that you could actually check like before you actually put money into a contract. Super valuable. We have like South Korea making master degrees in Michelson and stuff. I just see a bunch of like, like foundation building going on under that blockchain. And then I'm reading through the news and I see Reno starting like a, a Reno DAO, a Reno coin. They're making artists who like do art around the city. They're making NFTs and selling it. They're coming out and saying, we want a Reno DAO because they know that they could share profit back to the people that hold Reno coin. It's like a perfect funding and then like pays back the investors through its, you know, its own cash yeah. flow. That's insane. That's insane. And it's really hasn't been touched. Like NFT is not art. It's not just art. Yeah. And I think but, that's what people are going to learn. And that might feel the next kind of push up. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in. I, I kind of, you know, you read the headlines. Mm -hmm. So kind of, read a little bit about this with Tezos. 
but you're right. There is, um, well, you got Nevada, you have Florida, and then there's other uh, like European nations that are starting to get onto the whole NFT train. You got billionaires starting to invest in the NFT uh, ecosystems like Rari. I think it was um, a guy from Shark Tank. What's his name? Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Yeah. Yeah, bro. That guy invested in, I believe, in Polygon and Rari. Like, um, these, it's, it's all happening. It's all happening. Hey, you beat the big money by a year, man. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, I love it. But yeah, it's happening. And and just since we're on the topic of NFTs, it's pretty timely. When Chain Ecosystems are starting to release their own coins and they're releasing a dApp in a few days called Zookeeper. And it's kind of gamified because like as you get like the tokens for providing liquidity, you can stake it and get NFTs that boost like the percentage you get from your mining and reduce the time. It's 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 like a self-feeding loop, right? Can You can imagine right. how you get coins, you stake it, you apply the NFT, you get more coins faster. You stake it. It's kind of I'm excited about that because I like I like you know gaming it like that. So just FYI. Nice, nice. I'll have yeah. to take a look at that because I, I I think I've read something recently on um, probably more title shopping again, but you know just reading through the titles. But I think I've seen something about that, and then I I think I heard something watching you. So that sounds that sounds really interesting. It's kind of like. Uh, NFTs, gamified, DeFi, all amalgamated. Wrapped up. Yeah. All wrapped up. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. And um yeah, like they're getting they're getting audited right now. They're in the process of getting audited. But the last DAP made on WAN chain, WAN swap, just got audited. Complete this audio. I think it's Hedget. Is that how you spell um oh, say it? Yeah, Hedget. Yeah. So like good track record, blockchain's yeah. pounding out, you know, grade A code so it's a it's a risk right getting involved just disclaimer guys getting involved with any platforms a risk to some extent mm -hmm. a good track record same almost almost same core team that made wan swap and wan swap's been treating me very well so nice. you guys are looking for and I, I know that's how you like to get down right you like to get into really really new protocols so oh yeah you know. cool thanks man i'm gonna mm -hmm. i'm gonna go read through their like white papers and start digging in um that kind of like when you started talking about um, code review and all that made me think of Uniland because like mm -hmm. we talked about it last time, they recently just had their code reviewed by Certec and their flash loans came live and these flash loans or the flash loan product is actually like 3x more gas and cost efficient than Aave's. So they're going to start building this big um, like ecosystem around it to to help get developers on board to start using the product and things like that so that's actually really exciting for them uh, they're also working on their flagship product and with the token unlock that's happening on the 15th that's just throwing that out for everyone you know once that happens you know some people take profits i'm buying i'm buying that right there so that's another mm -hmm. thing i'm excited about that's audited now that's and that's a good point bro like Finding products that are audited uh, is huge. Yeah. Risk. Or at least teams that have proven to be able to do it, right? Like, because yeah. sometimes you don't have all the pieces. You got to, and you got to pull the trigger or else you lose, you miss yeah. opportunity, right? And that's, <laughs> you know, like you got to watch the team, look at the GitHub, all that. But for sure, audit mm -hmm. from a good, a good um, firm, Hedgic, mm -hmm. Certec, those are quality, right? So, yeah. Hey. Um, as far as the UF, UFT like uh, staking, right? You get seventy percent of the flash loan. Is that how it goes? Right. So okay. the stakers get seventy percent of the fees um, that you know they automatically get that. But then thirty percent of the fees goes uh, towards it's like a smart contract that takes um, the fee and they use that fee to then buy um, UFT off the open market and then burn it. Mm -hmm. So it makes UFT, you know, in the future will be kind of like a deflationary asset, um, you know, while, and if you're staking towards the liquidity pools, you'll, you'll be getting both sides of that, you know, essentially. Okay. Hey, um, want to turn the topic to, to Polkadot. I heard you mention Polkadot earlier on. 
Um, what are your thoughts on that ecosystem? You know, I haven't dug in deep to it because I'm not quite sure, you know, claim to be a layer zero trying to be the interoperability play, but it kind of reminds me of a project everyone's excited about, mm -hmm. you know, like there's other projects that are farther down the line now. And, if, but you've noticed, I kind of guys, I've said self admittedly be biased, right? Like I seem to be in love with the projects in 2017 because I've seen them fail. I have seen them go to the bear market. I've seen them not die. I've seen the teams <laughs> handle all this heat in the telegram groups. Like mm -hmm. it gives, I know there's a grit there mm -hmm. to the projects that are still here. So, Hey, well, I just want to know your thoughts on polka dot and see if I'm putting my head in the sand. And a lot of people probably will say that I am, but want to hear your take. Oh man. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of with you, bro. Um, I think it has an amazing potential. I like their interoperable play. I think what makes them most interesting to me is their parachains. So, you know, they like a project that's doing a specific thing kind of, you know, locks into the parachain and no one else can kind of copy them for so for so long. I think that's interesting, but I'm not sure that that's going to start that, like how they say, like Cambrian explosion of people using the ecosystem and really letting the market decide who the winners are um, uh, in a more effective way. Like I think, for instance, like Ethereum, you know, anything and everyone can go ahead and just jump on board and then the market decides who the winner is. I like that better and also because I think that people not only just follow projects because of, you know, good marketing and, um, you know, just very, like random things. They, they, they specifically follow projects because of the actual functionality and the usability. And so then I think people really know they're the users, you know, and I, I like that, that, uh, that they, that there's the, I feel like the projects get to, be tested longer and it kind of like goes on along with what you're saying with these projects that have been around for a long time they can stand the test of time still survive that is a massive respect to these projects that can do that because it like crypto literally like eats you up and spits you out it, and time moves so fast yeah so i like polka dot to answer the question i think mm -hmm. gavin woods is brilliant i like that he's from ethereum then he has this thought process of you know, fixing all the things that Ethereum has done, you know, possibly wrong or something like that. But I would say I'm more bullish on other ecosystems. Okay. I mean, hey, at the end of the day, guys, it's all just our thoughts, right? It's, yeah. We're not gurus here. It's just kind of, I've seen it before, but we're starting to get to a point in the cycle. And that, that's a good point where we can kind of segue naturally, getting to a point, good point in the cycle where we have some too big to fail chains now. Uh, you know, Bitcoin can't go down or everything goes down. <laughs> Ethereum can't go down or everything goes down. You know, th there's some pillars now that we didn't yeah. really have that last cycle. It was just kind of like everyone's like, oh, this is going up. This is going up. Ah. You know, throw money everywhere. Now it's kind of like, hey, guys, this is the hierarchy. Or at least people are starting to dictate that this is the hierarchy. Bitcoin, yeah. Ethereum, everything else below here. Did you hear about Bitcoin Cash possibly scaling Ethereum? With one of their side chains through something called smart bch I, I would be the first one to say never count uh roger ver out never count the bch community and devs out i mean they've been here forever these guys um you know worked some of these guys worked on bitcoin early on and even some of the uh different ethereum uh you know proposals and different things throughout the years so I wouldn't count BCH out. Um, I think that layer two is definitely that war is not over. I, I love Matic, um, but I I could see multiple scaling solutions, you know, with different trade offs, all helping to work with different types of dApps. You know, you got like some dApps that still don't want to go over to Matic, which Matic to me currently right now is the most viable second layer scaling scaling solution available right now. Um, and they're holding out for optimism, which is coming out in May, I believe. And that's specifically because of the security, because optimism is on chain on Ethereum, you know, on chain versus, you know, 
the uh, second layer type solution. And because of the security of things, certain dApps want that increased security, but it's not necessarily necessary for every dApp. You know, if it's like a gaming app dApp or um, a DEX that is doing multiple or uh, tons of transactions, you know, Polygon's perfect. So then I wonder what will BCH provide? You know, what will be the trade-offs, but what will also be their their benefits? So that that's something I'm, I'm very excited because, you know, I love BCH as well. I For sure. That. Yeah, you know, and the reason I bring it up is because it, it does have a gay, grayscale trust. We got ETC, it was getting 51% attacked. We People were talking about, Charles Hoskins was talking about perhaps merging its mining with Bitcoin mining to increase the hash rate, improve security. Like, that's stuff that hasn't been talked about before. I didn't even know that was possible until, like, I see more and more, like, heads of other blockchains saying this stuff, like, hey, can we use this blockchain to do that? Maybe how this digital ecosystem is evolving. Different layers, right? We have a layer one, a layer two. Will there be a layer three? How many layers will there be? But all I do know is it's complex. Totally. With all the yeah. different organs, you know, you could even say like oracles are like the brain, you know, in a, mm. in a sense or something along those lines. You know, so I, I totally get it. And there is, I agree, there's going to be so many different layers. And, uh, you know, you look at the body, you got two hands, you got two feet, two eyes. There could be two, you know, different um different types of protocols or things in the same category that make the body, which is the internet of blockchains be. Hey, um, have you paid attention to other solutions other than blockchain? Like, you know, I cover Hedera Hashgraph, which is Hashgraph. There's some other ones like IOTA, which is the Tangle. Mm -hmm. um, some other like other blockchains doing it a little differently, like MHC, which does like introduces its own like AI to route, but have you looked at anything like that at all? Or are you mainly focusing on blockchain? I did in the past, like back in 2018 during the bear market when you're just going through everything, trying to find the buys. Um, I know IOTA came up a lot just because they had so many huge partnerships. Um, and I always hear, uh, you know, a lot about the others that you brought up, but I'd have to say I don't that's not my specialty. So mm. I mean, do you, do you, what do you think about it? Like in, in general, are you, do you think those are viable or? Do I think it's viable? Um, look, all this to me is pretty new tech, right? And I worked at like an aerospace defense company before I've seen new tech be developed and I've seen it fall apart multiple times. Right. So like, I always want to hedge. I want to hedge to blockchain. That's why I hold hash graph. I don't hold any tangle, but that's why I hold hash graph. I want to hedge to Ashcraft. That's why I hold blockchain. The way I look at it is kind of like I'm hedging myself on everything mm. because I just want to be at the end because the winners are going to explode. So in far as do I think they're viable? Yeah, I think Hashgraph is actually pretty interesting. It's for a different application though. Hashgraph is valuable because of where I used to work, like in military application and stuff. If you have a plane go down over enemy lines and they find it and recover and say, I don't know, and a, co a country cracks your code or decrypts you know the chain they mm -hmm. got everything the whole thing the whole shebang huh. everything you ever sent right. but if you use hash graph they only get the last two messages you know military is not going to have that they're not going to have like the whole shebang out there they don't even want to risk it so they wouldn't use a technology right. that does that wow i you know that that's another one i'll have to look into but but no i i don't i don't look at um a lot of projects outside of like blockchain mm -hmm. but uh it sounds interesting, though, and, and I think you bring a very valid point up, which is that, um, you know, those can be they, those can offer applications for military or other categories out there. Yeah. And, you know, I'm the only guy who's really saying that about about Hedera Hashgraph is because I have unique understanding of it. Right. I could t I could see the use case, but that's why I like to add guys. That's why I like to talk to a lot of people in crypto is get their take on it because they have life experiences. I don't and you don't. We all have different life experiences, so that's what the, where the value is of getting together with smart people, mm -hmm. even from different blockchains, mm -hmm. because they know things you don't. It's just yeah. a fact, right? So and this is why I love coming on your show and also watching your show because, I mean, you're you're looking at the things that I am looking at, but also other things that I that my you know my mind hasn't actually you know delved into yet. So. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, 
Anytime, and that's cool. And thanks for uh, hanging out with us on Sundays. It's it's a good time, you know. It's yeah. long, but hey, don't have to watch it all and come back and, and check it out. Yeah, always. It's always great being here, man. And like, um, you know, I think you're a wealth of knowledge, and you know, a lot of respect to you, bro. Thanks, I appreciate that, man. Um, anything else you're excited about in the space? Anything you're you, you mentioned privacy coins? Mm-hmm. What? How do you see that playing out? You know, I had this theory on my on my channel that, hey, I don't think all privacy coins will eventually be like delisted or banned because there's two of them in the Grayscale Trust, Zcash and Horizon. Okay, <laughs> Grayscale doesn't do anything that they might get sl- their hands slapped on. What's your take on privacy coins? How will it probably be allowed by the powers that be or or won't they yeah they i think privacy is is going to take off at some point and it really just comes down to regulators being educated i think regulators are just diving in and they're like xrp what uh bitcoin what and soon they're gonna start you know breaking down those layers and getting to privacy and really understanding that it's needed you like the internet has privacy with https um, you know, at some point businesses are going to be like, I don't want everyone knowing my business every time I make a transaction. So I think privacy is definitely going to be a thing. I think everyone's put it on the back burner, but what I'm seeing is that there's, there's these, um, there's a lot of privacy projects that are just working under the radar. I can't put my finger on any given project. You know, obviously everyone knows about Monero. Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually something that I I can't wait when I get a good block of time to just dive into privacy projects because I think there's going to be a privacy play that's like the link, you know, the link privacy play. And no one's looking at it because, you know, all the big YouTubers are saying privacy, no one's ever going to touch that, which possibly not for a while, but, but I think it's going to blow people away. There's going to be this one project. I, I, I totally agree with you. And I hear that sentiment as well, right? A lot of YouTube channels saying privacy, no way they're going to allow it. Hey, man, I don't know, but I just come from a different time where people in crypto didn't care about what was sanctioned. <laughs> the point was to be private. Mm-hmm. That was the point. So now we're seeing a mix of different investors like psyches because they they come in from like they attracted probably for the more financial reasons, right? Mm-hmm. But at some point, crypto was a huge libertarian play. Mm-hmm. I talk about Zcash. I have a video on Zcash. Mm-hmm. They yeah. just had their, their having in November. Hmm. Six months from now is May. Hey, what know? brought me into crypto is privacy. Yeah, I was. That was what brought me in, man. Like, um, I was like a gold and silver guy that also, you know, saw privacy and 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 really loved that. And that got me kind of diving into the, um, you know, going down the rabbit hole, but. I've read a lot about Zcash in the past, and that's actually more than Monero, in my opinion, could be the coin uh, if there is one of the ones that if I had, you know, gun to my head, because they have the um, that dual layer where they can switch privacy off. That's also like a really big deal, and regulators love that. The other thing is that I do see a lot of the the Wells smart money um, that that like that project that have like that project talked about in the past. These regulators are going to have a really hard time, and I think that's why you hear these guys talking about accepting certain things like DeFi because they just realize that regulators in the banks who kind of had a lot have a lot of sway in our world are already realizing you can't stop the people, you know, the people have this, this technology that is decentralized and powerful. And there's, there's a whole new status quo coming. <laughs> Anything else? Any two cool projects? I know that um, you said I'm the all coin forest hidden gem guy, <laughs> but any of, on your, on your uh, horizon here that you see, Um, you know, besides uh, I'm huge on ETH also, I just, in general, hold a lot of ETH and I love mm-hmm. ETH. I think that what's coming up in the near future with the Ethereum proposals and um, just staking and all these different things, you know, people are starting to bring up 
uh, concerns about energy consumption and all these things in the future. And, you know, Ethereum, I think, is is set to start making these updates that are going to appease the regulators and people. And besides ETH, which is something that I, I love for all those reasons, also the Cosmos ecosystem persistence, they're going to come out with some really powerful products that are interoperable. You know, they're, they're backed by, you know, the Cosmos ecosystem or Tendermint, uh, you know, based blockchain technology. And some, some of these products are just really revolutionary. They have like liquid staking, which is going to be able to free up your capital so that essentially in a word derivatives and um, they have, real use cases for NFTs. Uh, they also have a product that's coming in the near future called Asset Mantle, which is for NFTs. And if anyone knows what like Shopify is, uh, you know, Etsy, you know, these kind of, um, you know, sites that you can go to and just start your own store, anyone can. Well, essentially this is gonna be a product on, within the um, persistence ecosystem that allows anyone to start their own NFT store for, you know, whatever reason, and then uh, create their NFTs and, and, you know, sell them. So it's like the Shopify of, of uh, NFT um, products out there. So wow. there's some really big um, uh, products that are being built on persistence and in general with their staking and their token launch recently, I think persistence is going to do, immensely well. I just compare it to other um, tokens within the Cosmos ecosystem like Terra Luna. Uh, Luna did some type of insane run. I think it went- Killed it, killed it, man. Luna went insane earlier this year. Yeah, it's just, it's on a tear. So with the same type of background and technology with it, their own products that are um, very comparable and in um, cutting edge. I think that that project's going to do very well in the next couple of months. It's it's more of like, it's kind of like last year when I was talking about Matic for the whole year and everyone was like, it's a two cent stable coin. And all of a sudden <laughs> it blew up because everyone realized the use case and, and uh, that the ecosystem was extremely powerful. Persistence is an, uh, another ecosystem that I think is like with their staking and everything that they have, they're going to be bringing to the table. I think it's going to blow up. Awesome. And, and guys, just real quick, being a visionary, no one agrees with you. I hope you guys know that. <laughs> you guys are looking around for validation from other people. They're not going to see it. Okay. In order to make money, like making picks, you got to be bold. Aztec right here of Crypto Secret Circle. He was out here saying Maddox the thing. Maddox the thing. For the longest time, I was watching him. Look, then it blows up. Then it goes 20x. So persistence, I was reading into them and um they're trying to focus on like like you said, derivatives, right? So provide like blockchain, um, I guess solutions for more traditional finance. They have so many different products. They they kind of like what they say is they're creating next gen financial products. Mm -hmm. They're also in a in a way they're they are bridging the gap between DeFi and traditional. Um, you know, institutions. So they're doing a lot, but they're each of the products that are currently launching in the near future and, and the product they already have, Comdex. If I could tell anyone to do research on one thing, look into Comdex. I, I can't say too much, but just look into Comdex. That is already being used. It's a working product. But you have Comdex, you have, um, you know, Asset Mantle, which is coming, and you have P Stake which are coming soon, these products are super powerful because of the the technology that, you know, that is there, the underlying technology. So um, they do a lot. They're just doing a bunch of things. They're powered by, you know, a blockchain that is Tendermint based and is just cutting edge. It's hard to conceptualize, right? When you get into some of these protocols, because it's like, what do you mean blockchain? They're talking to blockchains. Money's flowing like water. It sounds awesome, but mm -hmm. it's we've never really seen it before. Yeah, A lot of this stuff, guys, I understand how it's hard to wrap your head around because we've never seen it before. But it's so awesome that this one technology is making all this possible. 
all of this. There's a million and one blockchains and projects. They're all doing almost something different. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Ethereum. I really think it's attractive that Ethereum potentially could be coming deflationary. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that can make Ethereum pop. Yeah, I, I think that it kind of goes back to the layers and knowing that we're starting to see that the future is more than just layer one. Um, there's layers making it defl a deflationary asset is really important uh, for the success of Ethereum, makes it more interesting. And it makes it very, very interesting to institutions. And I think the next institutional play, like big institutional play, as in Bitcoin, is going to be Ethereum. And I think that what we're, we've been feeling is the reverberations of this news and and the changes that are happening within the ecosystem. And people are just like expecting Ethereum to blow up, which actually today it's been performing really well. But um, you know, I think people expected it to just be 2,500 already or 3K already, 5K. But the thing is, is, is um, you know, the, the main things that are coming, like the Ethereum proposals, for instance, like the one you were talking about making it a deflationary asset and staking mm -hmm. Ethereum 2.0, these things are all a little bit out still. Um, some of these are coming in July. So usually it's, you, you know, people start front running and jumping in a month to two months before. That could be May. That could be June. And I think I think Ethereum is going to blow up. I think it's going to blow people's minds away. I and mean, people are, my friend, you know, some of my friends are saying 10K. I, I, I'm saying at least 5K, you know. I'm saying but, at least 5K. Hey, it does not surprise me, right? Yeah. Ethereum's a king altcoin for right now. It's been the king altcoin. It kind of dictates how altcoins move. Altcoins don't go up unless Ethereum's up. So so when I look at it like that, 10K, 5K, I think it'd be more K, right? Yeah. I think Bitcoin went from 1,000, even less, to 20,000. That's yeah. Bitcoin. And we all know that Bitcoin moves in percentage games less. Bitcoin was making its mad moves, altcoin moves, 2010, 11, 12, 13 but as time goes on that percentage gain starts to stable out because it's the gold gold doesn't go up and down like that compared to platinum or silver right so that, now we see the the whole ecosystem maturing yeah maybe 30k who knows man like honestly this 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 cycle is also fundamentally different because we had in the last you know when bitcoin first came out we had qe happening but now we have coordinated global money printing happening in combination with stimulus happening. Institutional it, interest. Institutional interest. Sovereign interest. Mm. <laughs> it's a powder keg. Because guys, to be honest, crypto is, is a deflationary asset, most of them, right? They suck up, look, sponges suck up liquid. Mm -hmm. Crypto sucks up liquidity. Yeah, it actually brought, you made me think about something and, and that's like, I recently just charted the um, dominance of the altcoins. So like a lot of people look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, mm -hmm. the dominance for the altcoins just breached a major resistance. It came up and then it back tested it, which is like essentially an SR flip, a support resistance flip, uh, you know, TA wise. Mm -hmm. If we start moving up from here, um, you know, the dominance of, of um, altcoins, that could mean that all coins are about to like kind of blue sky breakout, and we in this month, which I I wasn't, I was kind of expecting April to kind of be this down sideways corrective month, but there's a real potential that all coins, and it could be down sideways for let's say some major alt coins, you know, like maybe a Bitcoin or a Cardano, some of the ones that have already run. Maybe, but but the small coins could actually like blow up, uh, um, yeah, in the next month or so. So that that chart, the others dominance chart, is definitely something people should look at. Well, yeah, I mean, I look at the BTC dominance chart. It says the same thing. I'm just waiting for that sucker to drop. Right. right. Over the last two years, it's been hitting at 73 percent dom for BTC, and every time it's been rejected. And since his last rejection, it went down what 20 percent. There's not much support underneath, what, what is it, 57, 55? 
It's a big old air pocket. I, and that's basically the premise of my channel. Mm -hmm. Talking altcoins because I think that's where like you want to be in the leg that's about to happen. I've seen you put my attention to several altcoins like in 2017 that are still, you know, haven't exactly blown up yet. And, and, uh, well, obviously definitely haven't got past their all time high. And those are probably some really interesting plays that could be coming up. Aztec from Crypto Secret Circle. It was great chatting to you, like always. Learned a lot of stuff. Hopefully, guys, um, you were able to pick up some nuggets as well. I know that I did for sure. Um, Aztec, where can the people find you, man? So Crypto Secret Circle is my YouTube channel. Um, on Twitter, it's at circle underscore crypto. And I just want to say thank you very much, Doug, for letting me come on your show again. And um, it's always good talking with you, bro. Like I, I would love to meet you in person at some time and just actually continue these conversations like for, you know, a longer extended amount of time. But I'm really happy to be here. Love your show. Um, I can see you growing like like crazy. And um, it's, it's awesome to see, man. I just hope I, I know your show is going to be like it's going to be bigger than BitBoy someday. Like <laughs> I can see Hopefully, it. Man. I can see it. You know, always a pleasure, man. I appreciate the kind words and all that. Um, yeah, anytime. And if you want to come on the Sunday show at any point, I could always just throw you up, have a segment, and we can kick it, chop it up, especially if you're already tuning in. So, Yeah, dude, that would be cool. Sounds good, man. Okay, man. Well, I appreciate it. All right, guys. It's been fun. Catch you guys later. Peace.